Hey you guys, Jared Duckett, Duckett Ladd Dental CPAs and Advisors here again with my business partner, Bill Ladd, and Dr. Michael Abernathy as well. And appreciate you guys tuning in again. And, and guys, we're excited. I mean, that first episode was great. We got really in, in depth on, on the whole game mentality of how you know, the game of business is changing and we really need to, to get out the shirt, right? The whatever it takes mentality. And what we want to dive in today is, is really the, um, you know, where we see the, the game changing, you know, and, and really in, in regard to patients, you know, what are, what are the patients going to be looking for when, when we get through this is, is their spending patterns or habits and where is dentistry going to rank on the listing, if you will, of, of where they're spending money and, and right. what can the, the doctor, the dental practice owner be doing right now in order to prepare for, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen, but you can kind of project and, and think about that. So Dr. Michael Abernett, jump in there and talk a little bit about kind of how you see maybe the, the patient spending habits changing and how that's going to adjust from the, the pandemic we're kind of going through now. Right. I, I mean, I, I think we need to look at this realistically as far as the amount of time it may take to, to come out of the other side. Um, now, it's, it's in the, the scheme of things, we're fairly early. I know people are passing away. I know that that parts of the country being inundated, but there's other parts that it really is not a factor right now. And that that itself will change. And so even when one area gets a little better, the other area will flare up until this finally goes away. I'm expecting probably the end of Mayish, first of June, maybe. You know, yeah, we're, we're right at March 31st today. So yeah, two yeah, months. If you yeah. Will. I mean, you know, I think it could be two months now. And, and again, a, a cure, not a cure, but a vaccine of, of, you know, from what I read is somewhere between six and 18 months away. Um, we've, you know, we haven't seen all of the economic impact on things other than dentistry. I know we're just talking about dentistry, but the ripple effect of, of things affecting transportation or manufacture could affect us long term. We see that in protective equipment. Uh, so I expect this to be, you know, April, May, June-ish, you know, kind of thing. Um, it could be longer. It could be a little shorter in different parts of the country. Certain areas will be hit harder than others, but it's not going to be weeks okay it's going to be much longer than that so as this goes on that means and i'm thinking about the perspective of our patients okay if this goes on you know people that worked for you know that at football games or basketball games or uh were olympians or uh they were if you weren't in the if you weren't in the grocery stores or pharmacies you've not been working real you know you've been working from home or, or you're out of work and so Again, even though there's stimulus packages and stuff like that, I think when this is all over, people as a whole, because they've gone through this recession, and there may be another recession following this financially, you know, that was an overdue. It doesn't have anything to do with the virus. It was just kicked off by this. We're overdue for it. It, it could follow pretty closely here. You usually don't see that in a presidential election year because people will try to stave that off so they can get reelected or get elected and then things change. So we've got a lot of unknowns. And so it's like sitting here and I'm sitting on a third floor building and there is a thunderstorm moving towards us. And now it's really sunny right where I am, but I can tell the wind's blowing, right? It's coming out of the Northwest. It's going to come. So it's going to rain. Okay. So patients have that, have that sense of, forebodings sometimes too when they go through something it's kind of like PTSD okay in a way when they go through a real challenge financially because it is challenging financially they tend to do like we have done and we've we've cut out paying things we don't have to pay for we've, we've asked for you know everything to do yet we're still going to come up short okay lines of credit we're still going to come up short okay take the average patient in night in 2019 the average patient can't afford one out of uh, out of pocket five hundred dollar expense without dipping into their savings or something. That was just reality. Now the game has changed reality because when we come out of this, people are going to be short for the year 
maybe 30, 40 percent short for the year because even if they get back to work, their businesses won't pick back up real quick either. Okay, so it's it's not just going to be three months and that's a quarter of the year, so it's going to make a quarter less income. Okay, right. it could be. So what we're trying to do is to help you hit this where knowing that it's not going to be just 25 percent less that you make this year, we want you to be as good or better at the end of the year, even though you miss those three months. That's the whole idea of offering these deals. But our patients can't do that. So when, when this comes, when we come through, I think there's going to be an overwhelming uh, trend of not going to the dentist for a while unless they need to. They may postpone cleanings. Heck, it's only six months from till Christmas. I'll just wait until 2021. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know that's going to happen, but I probably would. Okay. Uh, they, they have a toothache or something. They're going to get that taken care of, but they may postpone, uh, you know, elective services that aren't really necessary for a while. And so it won't be business as usual. Uh, I think there's, let me ask you, can I ask yeah. you a question on that? Yeah. We're talking about the financial impact. Do you think psychologic, psychologically patients will have a, uh, health concerns about visiting their dentist again? Uh, concerns that they might get sick? Yeah. Going to the dentist? yeah. yeah. I mean, so I do. the scars, the scars of, you yeah. know, you're going to be scarred about being in group settings. I mean, do you feel yeah. like, yeah. you know, that, that there may be a, an effect there as well? I do. I mean, you, you need to expect from a dental standpoint that they don't think a cleaning is really necessary. I mean, it's not something they can't postpone. It's not a big deal. Now, again, if they had a broken front tooth, yeah. I mean, that might, raise their level, but there's going to be some type of pandemic hysterical scar that's going to stay with them. I mean, just like I can remember 2003 through 2009, you know, where high tech went in the ground, real estate went in the ground, banking went in the ground that, you know, for the longest time, you, you mentioned high tech stocks and everybody started going, mm. they just had a tick. I mean, you just automatically would, you know, develop a tick. Okay. This is going to be the same way here. So if, if, if the public does identify uh, areas where they're put in a position where somebody else has sat there and spit on the chair, they're not going to like that. Yeah. Okay. So part of what we got to do is we got to change that mindset by dripping on them every week mm. and reminding them how how we were already ahead of all of this. We always used masks. We always used gloves. We always changed our gowns. Everything was wiped down and sterilized between patients. I mean, no medical office does that ever. I mean, they just take that piece of butcher paper and change it out. Okay. It's just, they don't, they don't do that. Okay. Uh, and then the added things we're going to do now on our side, the things I'm concerned about is on protective, you know, personal protective stuff. I'm hoping they don't make an N95 mask. We've never used an N95 mask ever. It's used by painters. You buy it at a hardware store for, you know, scraping lead paint and stuff like that. But there is an N100 mask. Those are probably $40, $50 a piece. And you have to change them with every patient. Uh, but I'm thinking you are going to need to start looking now for personal protective equipment and supplies, okay? We normally don't use shields with every patient. I mean, most people wear, you have to wear protective glasses. That's what sure. your state board requires, protective glasses. But I think shield will be the standard yes. of care. I think that even, uh, and this is really reaching and this may not happen, but it's because I use, I can count on one hand the number of patients don't use nitrous oxide in my office every time they come in. But I could see them requiring a nose piece that filters the air while they're laying there, mm -hmm. you know, with just air, not nitrous, nitrous oxide, but, you know. So it's going to be face shields for you, mask. I'm thinking probably you're going to have to have coats that are disposable. Now, they're about $9 a piece, uh, Tyvek uh, deals, that you have to change between every patient, okay? I think there's going to be a push to... Uh, I mean, this is after the thing. Now, right yeah. now, if you're seeing patients, I think they should be checked in at curbside. Okay. You fill out that you go out there, fill out, I mean, the staff person that goes out there for the emergency, fill it out. 
uh, you take their temperature before they enter the office. Every patient has to have that done. You take their blood pressure before they can come into the office. You do their medical history. Then you do not set them in the reception area. You take them directly to a surgical suite, an operatory. Okay, that's what you do now. I think some form of that will happen, you know, uh, in the future. I think that you ought to go look at uh, who makes the uh, hand sanitizer. Is it GoGo? I mean, uh, the company that makes the hand sanitizer. Ooh, uh, um, they make all sorts of dispensers. Yeah. And and protective stuff. I think that you could probably put one of the Purell, you know, dispensers at your front door. Yeah. in the reception area, uh, at the checkout deal, in the bathroom, and in every operatory. So the key here is is to, to do those things, but also, like you said, drip on your clients. Communicate to your clients of what a, you're doing. preventative. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. We've added, you know, we've always done this. We're added this level of protection above that. That, you know, uh, I, I looked this up, and I started looking at the prices, and there is a way to completely sanitize that entire office in an hour. It uses a dry... Uh, uh, this is what they use in uh, emergency rooms and stuff like that at the end of the day. They can turn it on and it fogs it with a dry uh, uh, suspended vapor of hydrogen peroxide, which kills everything. It so, doesn't. So what, what? what I'm hearing you say, Dr. Abernathy, is, you know, if you're really trying to optimize, you know, your practice and how you kind of come out on the other side of this, you feel that, that with some of these scars are there, that maybe one of the this deciding factors that some patients are going to have is what are you doing to take my health seriously? I, am I hearing right. that, that you think that's going to be a, maybe a, a higher on the priority list of uh, the uh, decision-making process? Well, and plus, if you tell them what, you're, what you've done and what you'll be doing in the future, the added levels, I'm thinking that some of, they'll talk to their neighbors and friends about it, yeah. and they're going, well, you know, my office was really, I mean, the office I go to, the, my office, my dentist's office, you know, and, and this is how patients think. Uh, the president of American Airlines, this was 30-something years ago, but I remember him saying this in a, in a, when he was addressing, uh, in a hangar, all the people that work for American Airlines in that area. He said, a coffee stain on our tray back covers means we don't do good engine maintenance. Mm. Okay, now, so... We're going to tell them what we're going to do, but when you walk up to a door of an office and that, that front door should be cleaned two, three times a day, should be no fingerprints on it, okay? Yes. You, there should be no spots on the floor from someone who had spilled coffee, no scratches on the baseboard from your vacuum machine. The office needs to smell because there are things to make this smell clean. Uh, uh, scent, S-C-E-N-T, scentair.com. Uh, did a deal for Nordstrom's once. They told them that they could change the buying habits of Nordstrom's and, and increase the retail sales. They did it. Okay, you can't smell it, but it's there. Okay, you you're going to have when they walk in, it needs to smell clean. It can't smell like eugenol. It can't smell uh, musty. It can't smell. There can't be dirty. I mean, I told people this way before we had any pandemic. People are looking at this, and what they do is they look at your, at your flower bed outside your office or how neat the things are, and in their mind, they, they might think it consciously, but when they see that there is, you know, a fire ant bed or you've got poison ivy in your plants or there is spots on your windows, then you probably don't have the attention you need on your uh, yeah patients and, and the work you do. Same thing, when, if, if you just walk through an office, I would have to say 99% of the offices are cluttered. Mm. Okay, people have personal items, which I think is, used to be okay, but I mean, we need to have a new vision of what we're looking at, and as much as I don't like modern, uh, real, uh, just modern homes or modern you know, commercial businesses, it's going to have to be a little bit more like that. Nothing on the countertops, you know, uh, no, nothing stored under desk where I look over and I don't see it, but it's just stuffs everywhere. Okay. Yes. We need to house clean. You got time to house clean, you know, declutter everything, uh, have the carpets cleaned every month. I mean, we had them professionally cleaned twice a month in my office because the hallways 
had carpets. The operatories didn't, but we used it to minimize sounds as they traveled. And so we were trading off having the carpet there, but everything needs to be spotless. And, and you know, yeah. the things that you don't know, there's a commercial on TV that says, uh, you think your car smells like this, but it really smells like, you know, and they have old athletics, like a jockey strap, whatever it is. You've become nose blind. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have become kind of nose blind to really the, because it's, it's a form of marketing how our office presents itself to a patient. And this is going to be a big thing when this is over. So you have time to walk through, back a dumpster up to your office and dump out 90% of the clutter. So Dr. Abernathy, how would, so if you're, if you're dripping on your clients, if you're, yep. if you're telling them all the preventative stuff you're doing, if they have concerns for, for, you know, getting sick, coming back in, and if you're doing all that, how, how do you, if, if that's not a concern, you, you try to get rid of that concern with them. How do you try to get them back in the chair once you open back up? If, if their spending habits have moved lower down the list, what can you well, do to encourage them to get back in, get yeah. their six month done that maybe in their mind, they're like, you know what, I'm going to not do that six month because right. I can't afford it. And I'm going to push it's, it. It's going to be tough. About that? It's going to be tough. I, again, this, and I know people are going to send me, they're going to be mad. PMG Lighthouse, Solution Reach, uh, Demand Force, all of these, these, these technical aspects of contacting patients, okay? And, you know, they'll say statistically it'll decrease your no-shows, no cancellations by 30%. Yeah. I'm sorry to say this, but if you use those things after the fall here, Patients want to hear a personal phone call. Mm. Okay, I'm That's sorry. Huge. I mean, we can use as an adjunct to the personal phone calls. Once they say they're coming, then you can remind them with that. But I think there's going to be a high touch, personal, back to, you know, kind of back to the future kind of thing. Now, you see this on TV already. You'll see uh, someone that, you know, uh, she's calling the phone and she's going, uh, she goes, yes, and then say, you know, this is such and such bank, and it's the same person. And they went, oh, I thought I'd get a recording. And he says, no, we have real people here. You know, and they go in. I mean, you can see that happening, okay, now. I mean, before this even happened, that people were moving away from using, just having technology as touching their clients and adding that personal touch. We need to go way back and start doing that. So when we first start back, and this could be in advance of, opening up that practice is you're going to have y'all I tell where I'm from, from Texas, you're going to have to call these patients and scripts are going to be important, but it's the aspect of the thrust of the script, not the words they use. Okay. So I could probably tell you that if we were going to call that there is going to be some resistance to doing what I'm going to ask them. Okay. Like, uh, you know, Bill, Jared, you, you know, you ask your clients, is there any way you can get your crap in here by the middle of March <laughs> instead Something of like that, yeah. the 14th of April? Okay. Well, you already know that, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't get this form from such and such. That's okay. We want it all in, you know, whatever you can get in, in, you know, so we know what our workload looks like. Okay. We know that we're going to have pushback on this, right? One, uh, there, there's going to be an invisible force field of the government says, yes, you can go back to work. And if a certain person says that in our government, everybody's going to go, we well, don't know what he's talking about anyway. Okay. But I don't know that the public is going to go, yes, let's it's just as it was. I'm going to go to Walmart and hang out and I'm going to go, you know, to the mall and I'm going to do this or I'm going to go to the dentist. That's going to be a pushback. So we're going to have to take on this phone call. We're going to have to assume that there's going to be one, two, these three things that you're most concerned about. What are you doing to prevent this, for, keep me safe? Is it really safe for us to come to a dental office? And then, again, the, the traditional things like, do you have peak demand times, times that consumers want to come in? It might mean that when you open back up, you're only open up from two to five or six every day, and maybe even Saturdays, until you can get some semblance of, you know, you're going to have to be there when the, when the client says they want to come. Okay, yeah. so we're going to address that, and it might be, Jared, 
I've been sending you these emails about what we've always done and the added protection. Uh, the uh, state and the dental association said it's now safe. Uh, we were calling to see if you know we could get you scheduled for your cleaning. Mm. I understand in the past you've always liked coming in at about this time on a particular day because your software will tell you. He said, and then so you give them a benefit, 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 and then you make the request. It's yeah. it's real important that you guys practice this now mm. and, and see good. if you can get this down. I mean, just it's going to be a tough. It is going to be uphill to do this, and and then if they say no, what are you going to say? So that's another script that maybe I can work a script up for you and lay out all of the kind of like a mind map. If they say this, yeah. say this. So but, right right now is a perfect time to get because I'm assuming and the, the doctor's not making all these phone calls, but maybe the front desk person is, receptionist, et cetera, yeah. is sit down with them right now and start working through that. Maybe role play some, you know, some phone calls, if you will. So then when it's time, you know, it's going and people know exactly what they're trying to do because it's all about, it's all about getting the patients back in the chair as quickly as right. possible. I mean, well, I and, and have... keep in mind, it, it may not be the front desk to be the first best person to call. I mean, if you think about it, people get really upset. I mean, I had 11 hygienists and it was like, they take a vacation. They occasionally get pregnant. They're sick sometimes. I mean, but they're going, well, wh why didn't you tell me that Vicky wasn't going to be here? I mean, I wouldn't have scheduled to have my teeth cleaned if I knew Vicky wasn't going to be here. Okay, so I might have my hygienist contact my hygiene mm. patients. I might have my assistant call the clinical patients. I mean, there is some type of bond that forms with certain people. Now, you may have that special person at the front desk that knows everybody in your small town. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just thinking that if you have a long-term hygienist or a long-term assistant, they would be equally, if not even the better person to call. Okay to reconnect with that person. Now, again, right now, you're dripping on people every week. Uh, I just, I sent about 30 clients. They're going, oh, I don't know what to say in the, in the email. And I said, well, try writing something. Just pretend we bumped into each other on the street and we talked for three minutes and we're gone. Yeah. That's all. We're not talking about a bunch of dentistry. You're going to remind them that, you know, you're doing this right now. But uh, attach a, a, a recipe to it. And uh, I, I can't, I, I'm so, because I, I had to ask my wife for this recipe. Uh, she, the kids made it while they were over there. And it's called the empty crypt or e empty tomb. Anyway, it's, you just take uh, the biscuit, you know, stuff that, you know, that you can buy in the can, roll it out. And you put butter and cinnamon and you wrap it around a marshmallow and you put it in the little baking tins. And then when it, the marshmallow disappears, there's a hollow spot in there. It's, you know, it's for Easter kind of deal, you know, it's so empty too. Easter, I get it. Um, okay. okay. But, but it tastes, I mean, like you go, there is a God. I can tell <laughs> if, if this is, is awesome, you know, and I'll send everybody that I'll send you that recipe and you can send it out because I have go. it in my phone. But I mean, again, people are stuck at home. Just, you know, what are the things that you would appreciate somebody saying? Now, yeah. in addition to doing that, I think you ought to call anybody over the age of 60, the doctor, not the staff. Mm -hmm. Just call and say, hey, I'm sitting here doing absolutely nothing, and I just wanted to make sure that you're doing okay. I mean, if you need me to go to the grocery store for you and pick something up, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, if you have any That's emergencies, huge, right let me know. I mean, it's just it's that whatever it takes. I mean yeah. – I can't tell you all the things that I used to, every patient, I mean, still, every patient that I saw that I stuck with a needle, I had a terrific patient card from Abbott Cards, and I would write a personal message every time that they came in and said, hey, you're awesome today. If you need anything, here's my cell phone, call me. And, you know, doctors won't do that because they don't want to give me your cell phone, but I'm going, if I give you my cell phone, Jared, and say, you call me if you have a problem, you will die before you'd call me. If you, if I hadn't give you a phone number and you were hurting, you'd track my ass down. That's right. Okay? I mean, it's like, I, you know, it's like, it, and, and then I'd always say, hey, send me two more patients just like you. Yeah. And then, uh, then the front desk would mail it. And because we speak now with texts and emails to get a personal card that your doctor wrote you for coming to the dentist, they're going, I've never had a patient come back and say, I can't believe you took the time to write that. It yeah. took me two minutes to do that. Okay. You think that yeah. if you, 
all you got to do is step your, you know, stick your foot out just a little bit and you're going to stick out a mile to probably most of the community uh, and other dentists out there. Now, in, you you the can't say that. Okay. You can't say that, but I can, you dummies. I mean, if they put 40 in a room, they couldn't tell the difference between you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so little. I mean, you know, my wife, if we went to conventions and, you know, we're, before we get there and maybe I'm speaking, she go, that's a dentist. I mean, how can you tell? He's wearing white socks and, and wingtips, you know, for <laughs> one or, or whatever it is. They just, it's like being, uh, I, I don't even know where your offices are. Okay. But I, like if you're in Oregon, you can tell the granolas. You know, you can, I mean, you can tell the people that just wear the earth shoes and stuff like that. You know, if you're, yeah. you know, if you're, if you go lift weights, you can tell the people that, you know, they just, they have that mystique. So again, dentists need, they don't have to do much to separate themselves. So yeah. Yeah. Bill, you'll get yourself well, in trouble if you tell your people that. I can, <laughs> I can tell I say that about all the time. Yeah. This is all, this is all stuff, you know, that the doctors can be doing right now. You know, Absolutely. They, can be, they can be dripping on their clients. They can be exactly. reaching out, you know, email, a text, uh, anything just to communicate, keep that constant communication in place. Um, but then that, that to me just, just really hit home those personal phone calls, you know, call the individual 60 and over, how are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's, it's just making that personal connection and, and that's really going to hit home to that person. Man, man that's right. And, and that's you know, nice. if you make the call and they're, you know, let's say they are having a little bit of a problem and you write yeah. a note. No. Yeah. I'll be praying for you. I, you know, I'm so sorry. If you need anything, just call me now. Okay. I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to get anybody to buy anything, but this book. Okay. In the letter that we've sent you, there's a place that you can download it. Okay. And there are chapters in here that we will probably refer to when we start doing the individual quick, this is what you need to do stuff. <laughs> you need to get it. And I mean, I hope you read the whole thing, but it's just been rewritten and there's probably a hundred pages more than there was before. And everything's been redone. Uh, it's called the super general dental practice. It costs nothing. All you have to do, you can just download it. I mean, if you want a paper copy, whatever it costs us to print it in the, the mailing, you can have it too. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's expensive to mail crap, you know? So uh, anyway, but if you want to download it, please do it because I think it will yeah. help you do something. Yeah. No, that, that, that book is full of, full of golden nuggets on what to do, really to optimize your dental practice and, and take you to the next level. So, guys, I appreciate it. I mean, a lot of gold nuggets in this, reaching out to clients, stripping on clients, just being real, being personal, uh, make that connection. And the whole goal is to get that patient back in the chair, you know, when we get through this. So, guys, I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and, and um, remind, remind those guys that, you know, that are over 70, that dripping is marketing, not anything else, Okay. <laughs> Okay. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Mark, you're bad about using CPA words. I'm bad about using right. dental words. And marketing people use marketing words. Right. And so I right. just want you guys to know it is not your prostate. Okay. Be, so, be, anyway. be, in, con be in constant communication with your clients yeah. uh, you're making, you're or dripping. Yeah. <laughs> that's good stuff well guys we appreciate it uh good video we'll we'll get some more here and um and keep uh, optimizing that dental practice guys, we'll talk soon thank you thank you